Hey what's going on guys, Chris here, welcome back to Marvel's Avengers and today let's take a look at the top 8 mistakes that is very likely you're doing right now and you might not even realize that you're doing some of these mistakes which in turn can severely impact the way you progress with your character in the game and your success rate in some of the high end challenges. So let's jump right into it and as always a thumbs up on this video would also be super appreciated. Coming up at number 1, one of the biggest mistakes I'm seeing a lot of players doing especially when trying to go against challenge 4 is to not focus on the proper stats for their builds. Like if you just build a character up you should first focus on skills followed by stats and only then followed by perks. Way too many players kinda get involved into investing too much into perks and looking for the best possible ones like especially so the invincibility ones or the damage buff ones without first looking at the stats that their gear have. And then they wonder why everything dies so slowly or why they don't clear rooms fast enough on challenge 4. So the first couple of stats you should be looking into are might and precision, you're going to want to invest in either the one or the other depending if you're playing with a melee or a range type of character. I suggest having at least 200 if you're aiming for challenge 4. For the valor I also recommend having this as your second priority since this boosts both your heroic damage and heal but more important also your critical damage for everything when it comes to dealing damage with any of your abilities and attacks. In this case I recommend having at least 300 of these since that's going to put you well above the curve. This brings us to number 2 on the list and also since we're on the subject of stats I'm seeing way too many builds online completely lacking any defenses altogether. Especially so I definitely recommend you having at least 100 resolve if you're planning to play on anything above challenge 2. So if you have at least 100 resolve you're going to get at least 15,000 HP which means that you're not going to get one or two shotted anymore by most of the abilities in the game including for the mini bosses and bosses themselves so this is going to be one of the biggest things you're going to want to do especially on challenge 4 even if this means you're going to have to sacrifice a bit of your attacks well in that case I also suggest going with a minor orange artifact that can give you up to 100 plus resolve which is going to be exactly what you need for that type of challenge moving on to number three let's talk about gear and gear rarity you might want to know that purple gear can still be very good. The general rule of thumb over here should be as follows, a great epic is way better than a mediocre legendary. So here are the two things that you should look at first and then there's a third thing that you should look at when it comes to spotting a great item. First of all make sure that it has at least two of the stats that you're looking for. So look for combinations like might valor, might proficiency or might valor proficiency, might valor resolve and so on and so forth, this is going to be a great start right here. From this point on, make sure that it has at least a 4 star rating, which means that its perks will have a higher chance to trigger. Once these two requirements are met, then it's the time to look at the perks themselves. Do they provide the type of damage that you need? Are they going to give you the good buffs that you're looking for, like for example damage or defense buffs that are easy to apply, or even more so, does it contain something that will boost your ultimate attacks? Well, if that's the case, then that's a likely going to be a best in slot item and there's a very rare chance that you will replace it for some time unless you're really lucky and get something much much better, maybe even an exotic that has much better stats and perks. If not, well you're going to have to look for more but in the meantime keep the gear that is close to that best in slot status. Moving on to number 4, don't upgrade everything to 140 power level just yet. Even more so if you don't have a best in slot item, it's much better to actually go in and only upgrade it a couple of times so that you also unlock its perks again assuming that it has great stats, a good star rating and its perks are decent. In that case yes you should go ahead and upgrade it at least a couple of times but otherwise I don't recommend going in and upgrading everything to 140. Not only is the stat difference not going to be that big, I don't think it's bigger than 10% between 130 and 140 but you're also losing a ton of upgrade modules in the process which you might need in case you find a best in slot item later on. Like I'm definitely seeing a lot of players online doing these mistakes and bringing really mediocre gear at 140 which brings them almost no benefit at all. That is why in this case I suggest only upgrading an item 2 times to 132 and leave it at that for a while until you can actually make sure that it's going to be upgraded with something way better. Moving on to number 5, let's talk about a bit of that stuff 
star rating since we didn't mention it in this video and not everything in your build has to be full five stars and you definitely shouldn't just wait for a magical five star with the best stats and the best perk to drop in your hands because that is very unlikely and rare to happen in the first place so star rating indicates the percentage chance for the perk on that piece of gear to trigger in the first place while the difference from one to five star increases exponentially between only the fourth and the fifth star it's barely even noticeable like most of the time i'm not seeing differences bigger than 0.5 to 1 percent between the star ratings of these two types of items when they have similar types of perks so what you can do in this case is you can still commit to an item even if it's not full five stars as long as the stats and the perks on it provide a noticeable boost to your existing hero but let's move to number six and talk about a number of items that are actually really useful not from a combat point of view but from a farming point of view and i would definitely suggest paying close attention to the norm stones many of which you likely won already and maybe even scrapped a few of these without knowing how good they are so norm stones are minor artifacts that have special perks on them that no other items might have this includes anything from providing extra faction xp to additional rewards from chests from enemies or even completing content on challenge 2 and above many of these will actually be provided by simply leveling up your faction standing so definitely save on the ones that provide extra xp and even more so the ones that provide extra loot especially from chests enemies and completing challenge 2 and above content like for example these ones over here you can even go ahead and stack them up and what you can do is before actually that event trigger happens like for example finishing a mission or killing an enemy you can quickly pause the game and go ahead and switch to that item so that you have that chance for that additional item to actually drop yes the percentages on these don't look really great like some of them are five to ten percent but trust me it is going to be noticeable when you're doing farming sessions where you will open up dozens of chests in a very short amount of time or you're killing a ton of enemies or completing missions in a very short amount of time moving on to number seven let's talk about another very overlooked feature or let's just say possibility that this game has to offer and i'm so surprised that most people choose to main a character in the end game and not instead focus on their entire party which is going to make clearing up end game content way way easier than just focusing on one single character so what you should do instead in this game is to actually create a full party setup that is going to provide you different types of benefits like you can definitely go ahead and main a character but you will also want to use the other ones to enable him even more some of the best skills that you can pick on the other heroes in the party are anything that drops heroics or willpower orbs on attacks that provide buffs to damage or defenses or even the ones that provide revives when your party mates are using that types of abilities most of these can be found in the specialities page when using your heroics or defeating enemies under those heroic effects just to go with a few examples that i'm using in my own setups you can go with thor's asgard fortune with enemies defeated while warrior's fury is active have a 50 percent chance to drop heroic orbs which is going to be super useful to constantly attack with your heroic abilities you can also go with hulk's ground zero which leaves a huge aoe gamma field but that also regens your party for as long as you stay inside of it and since it has a huge aoe you can basically stay in the entire battlefield and eventually get healed by it and you can also go with something like arc field for iron man which sets down a bubble that protects you from incoming damage but there's plenty more in there that you can easily switch to just pay attention to them and look for anything that easily makes your ai to spawn those willpower or heroic corps or even more so if they provide more damage defenses or some of that revive this brings us to the eighth and final point on the list and the major mistake probably the biggest that i'm seeing a lot of players doing is not combining positive and negative elemental stats so for the most challenging content this is what you're going to want to actually combine if you want to deal the highest amount of damage possible so a huge shout out to don ben fizz over on reddit for actually creating this easily visualized chart that kind of explains everything you need to know so the row at the top contains the pin particle plasma and cosmic elementals which are positively charged damage types meanwhile the one at the bottom with the shock cryo and gamma these are cold colored or what people call negatively charged damage types and the way this mechanic works is that you first want to apply either the one or the other and then apply the effect opposite of it let's say you apply 
apply a negative or cold colored damage type onto the target, such as for example shock damage. What you're going to want to do is to immediately follow up with an opposite warm or positive damage type, like for example pin particle. As you can see in this case, the pin particle effect is going to deal way more damage than it usually does with the same ability. And this is the ideal situation, you're going to want to have the same two different types of perks on the same character, but if that's not possible, again, throw back at a team party composition, you can have a different character use a different type of elemental and then your character to use the opposite of it. Maybe have somebody that applies shock or cryo and then have your own character apply pin particle, plasma or cosmic so that it benefits from that. And again, the damage is going to be huge, at least four times the regular amount, which is going to be absolutely insane on that challenge four. Anyway, this is it with today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, if you did, don't forget to comment, a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.